for a very long time now, people have been asking me in the comments section where I get this particular cloche from. And I'm afraid this is a very old cloche. It originally came from a big box store called B&Q. And it's been very serviceable. This is not a particularly thick plastic, but it's been out in all the elements and never cracked or become brittle. So, unfortunately, you just can't buy it now, although I do keep an eye out for it. So in recent months, I've been looking for an alternative and to be honest, they've been very difficult to find. But a few weeks ago, I found an alternative to this cloche and I'll share it with you now. So this is it. It came from a provider called Greenhouse Sensation. And they're quite well reputed company. They produce the Vitapod Propagator. And I saw this on their site and thought, yeah, I'll have a go at those. So I bought two of them. Now, I'd say that the plastic is a bit thicker, a bit more durable. But what you can't tell until you've had it a year or two is whether it becomes brittle. But I don't think it will. I think it's stabilised. It's got three vents on it rather than two. There's side vents on this type and three top vents on this one. And I would say the benefit of this cloche is also that it's a little bit wider. So on my bench particularly, it works really well. However, there is one drawback and that's the height. So the height of this old cloche is just that little bit greater, three or four inches. So if you've got a taller pot that you keep in the middle, it's no problem at all in here. In this one, you just can't have those tall pots. But I'd have to say as a suitable alternative, it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna use this on top of my carrot bed for a while. I'll show you what I've been doing. I'm going to take some care in here because there may well be some pests in this soil and I just want to make sure that my seedlings don't just disappear overnight. So one of the precautions I'm going to take is putting seedlings in here on this soil bed that are reasonably well established just in case something does decide to try and munch them. Well, that was inspired. So these broad beans are doing really well. They can go in here. There's another one. And I think probably the onions, which are also establishing quite nicely can sit in here as well. Okay. I think given that I've got the room, I'm gonna put these other trays of seedlings in. So these are mixed trays of various things I've sown. One more. Right, we'll try those large flush covers on the top and see how they go. See if the other one will go on the other side. Okay. 
Might be a little bit too wide for two. Yeah, it is, but I think it's going to be okay to do that. And I'll open up those vents during the day and close them tonight. So it's very early March and there's still risk around sowing seedlings too early, especially as it's very cold. So I'm trying to be, well, constrained. Try not to get too carried away. But there are some things I'm going to sow today and I'll show you what they are. And you can see what sort of things I'm doing, even though it's pretty cold in the polytunnel. So, these are flowers and we've had one of these Primula gold laced reds in the garden for some time. It's a beautiful flower and extremely hardy. And what's interesting about these is that you can sow them any time of year, but they're very slow germination. So I'm going to try and sow some from seed, see if I can increase my stock of that beautiful flower. And while I was looking at those, I came across this variety. These are from Plant World Seeds. And these primulas and auriculas, polyanthus, they're all of a similar growing nature, as far as I can tell. But some of the seed is really difficult to get hold of. So I thought I'll pick those up at the same time and I'll do two pots of those. It'll be a bit of a long-term growing project because as I say, they germinate slowly and they're very, very small once they get going. And that particular company threw in a free packet of seeds, Aqualegia Cottage Garden Mix. And we've got quite a lot of the more wild Aqualegia. But I thought, well, I'll grow those anyway as they're free and see how they get on. So they're gonna go into these small pots. There's not many seeds in those packets and you have to be really careful sowing them. And then as soon as I've sown them, I'll put these domes on the top just to keep the moisture at the right level. And they're going to actually germinate outside. I'm going to put them in the cold frame where they'll just stay for three, four, maybe even five weeks until I can see them shooting. The other thing I'm going to grow is some more lobelia. Now, I had great success with the lobelia that I grew. I took these in and germinated them and then brought them out here as soon as they started to show. And they've been doing really well. But I got a comment in one of my videos saying, why didn't I sew them into modules? It would have been so much easier. And that's absolutely true. So I've got a hold of the famous Charles Dowding tray. And this is a small tray, it goes against my deep rooted philosophy for a while, but hey, let's try these things. And what's characteristic about this tray is that it's very strong. This isn't gonna disintegrate for years and years and years. And it's got this larger hole underneath for popping the plugs up. So, this lobelia, which is called Regatta Blue Flash, it's a pale blue with a white speckle on it. I thought, yeah, I'll grow those and I'll put them in these modules and then I can have lots of plugs that I can dot around in various tubs and troughs and in the garden. So I'm going to have a go at that. And then I want to get a few more of these little trays back into use for germinating in the house and bringing back out into the polytunnel once they've germinated. So I'm going to pot up these cauliflower, kale, nero, cabbage, greyhound. Now they've all got a little bit leggy even though they were germinated and brought out straight away. So it gives me a chance to bury some of that stem into the pot and I'm gonna put them in these small pots. That's the first pot they're gonna go in. And that should release me three of these trays. And I'm gonna use one of them for sowing my next sowing of tomatoes. And I've got tomato Roma. And in this rather large seed, which of course is not tomato, but is squash, I put a few seeds 
from the variety tomato Lata, and I'm going to sow those and then they can go indoors and germinate and I'll bring them out rather like I did these which have been tremendously successful they haven't got leggy I love to see those purple stems starting to form which gives me a good indication that they're becoming hardy and they're doing really really well so I think that philosophy of taking them in and bringing them out as soon as they've germinated is working well. So that is three small trays which I'm going to empty tomatoes into one of them, lobelia into the Charles Dowding tray and a couple of pots of these primulas and I just need to find a pot for the aquilegia. So that's next. That's everything sewn and I've also tucked everything up because the temperatures just aren't rising today so all the plants are either on the deck covered up or in the carrot trough and I will put some fleece over the top of all of this tonight if it's going down into double digit negatives. And one thing I am going to be doing shortly is a bit of an experiment and it involves this stuff which is coir and I'm going to prepare it by just dropping it in the water and letting it expand over the next day and also hopefully the temperature will pick up and it'll be ready for my experimentation. Looks like my lily's doing nicely. I'm not going to drop it in the pond just yet but pretty shortly. Well, I've got myself a bit of a gate challenge here. So this net works out really well, but when it comes to this section, we need a bit of a solution to getting through whenever we want. So I've been in the garage in this cold weather and I've knocked up this very simple frame, which I'm hoping can go across here and act as a gate. So I've got to get a pole in both sides and somehow bridge the gap to the shed. So I've got this pole which I've made rather a rather sharp point of and I figure that's going in that end and I can put another post in the top. So that'll do one side and then this side is a bit of a challenge. It may be that I have to do it the other way around. We'll see. One way is to attach to the shed and that way I'll get a really strong fix. So I'm going to mess around, see what I can do. me for today temperature is dropping dramatically but it's coming together so I've got a bit of a panel there which I need to finish off work out how I treat that and then this gate which has got just a simple latch on it but opens very easily there's not much weight to that gate so it doesn't pull very much on this upright 
and plenty of tolerance all the way around because the tolerances aren't really that important. Let's get that in there. There we go. And then this net will just wrap around and store here, I think. And then if we want to open the space out at all, we can. So that just leaves me to shut up the hatch, give the chickens their last feed of the day and cover the seedlings. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochen Bar.